In this video, we're going to look at a very, very classic trigonometry problem, and we're going to solve it three different ways. So our goal is to calculate the arctan of 1 plus the arctan of 2 plus the arctan of 3. Like I said, we're going to do this three different ways. Our first way is just using straight trigonometric identities. So we're going to, in fact, use an identity that involves the inverse tangent function, but since it's not as common of an identity as some of the others, we're going to derive it from more common identities. So we're going to derive it from the sum angle formula for sum and the sum angle formula for cosine. So notice we've got sine of alpha plus beta is sine alpha cosine beta plus sine beta cosine alpha, and then cosine of alpha plus beta is cosine alpha cosine beta minus sine alpha sine beta. So notice we can immediately put these things together by dividing them to get a sum angle formula for tangent. So we have tangent of alpha plus beta is sine of alpha cos beta plus sine of beta cos alpha all over cos alpha cos beta minus sine alpha sine beta. Great. And so this is actually going to be a really important formula for us once we write it in terms of the inverse tangent. But before we do that, we need to rewrite this right-hand side so it has some tangents in there instead of sines and cosines. And we can do that in the following way. We'll multiply this by 1 over cosine alpha cosine beta over 1 over cosine alpha cosine beta. Okay, so let's see what we get when that happens. So I'll write that up here. Notice I'm going to have my tangent of alpha plus beta. And then when I distribute this cosine alpha cosine beta in the denominator onto these terms, over here the cosine beta cancels and I get sine over cosine each of alpha, so that's going to give me tangent of alpha. And then something similar happens with this second term and I'm going to get tangent of beta. Now let's see what happens down here. So notice down here, my uh, numerators and denominators cancel down to one. And then over here, I get tangent of alpha times tangent of beta. So I have one minus tan alpha tan beta. Great. And now the next thing that I want to do is introduce some more notation. So let's go ahead and set x equal to um, tangent of alpha. So what that means is that alpha is equal to arctan of x. And then I'm going to set y equal to tangent of beta. So that tells me that beta is equal to arctan of y. So now what I want to do is rewrite this. So I'll go ahead and take the arc tangent of each side, in other words, the inverse tangent of each side. That's going to give me alpha plus beta on the left, but I'm going to rewrite alpha and beta using those inverse tangent functions. So that's going to give me arc tan of x plus arc tan of y on the left. And then I'm going to take the inverse tangent of the right-hand side as well. So that's going to give me arc tan of but now I know that tangent of alpha is x, so I have x plus tangent of beta is y over 1 minus xy. So now let's go ahead and see what we can get for this um, inverse tangent of 2 and 3. But before we do that, I want to notice that we need to be careful here. And that is we have to um, use the fact that the range of arctan of, I'm going to use a different letter here, of t is the interval minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. And it's an open interval. So using this identity, we might have to fix what's happening on the right-hand side. So let's write that down. So we might have to fix what's happening on the right-hand side of this identity. And uh, we can do that in the following way. We can do that by adding um, some multiple of pi. And that's because if we take a tangent of theta plus pi, that's the same thing as tangent of theta. So here, uh, we'll just say here, this is tangent of theta plus pi is the same thing as tangent of theta. So that means we can add a, multi a multiple of pi to fix everything if we need to. 
Okay, great. So uh, the next thing I want to notice is we know approximately where inverse tangent of 2 and 3 or arctan of 2 and 3 are. So the inputs are positive, which means the outputs also have to be positive. So notice that arctan of 2 is going to be between 0 and pi over 2. And I should say it is not equal to pi over 2. And furthermore, um, arctan of 3 is also going to be between 0 and pi over 2. And again, that's because um, you're plugging positive numbers in. And arctan of a positive number is a positive number. Arctan of a negative number is a negative number. Okay, fantastic. So what that tells us is that um, the arctan of 2 plus the arctan of 3, it's going to be less than pi. So it's going to be positive, but it's going to be less than pi. Okay, great. So now the next thing that we want to use is our formula that we've derived. So notice we can take um, arctan of 2 plus arctan of 3 and then mash it together using this. So this is going to be arctan of uh, 2 plus 3 over 1 minus 2 times 3. But notice that that's the arctangent of negative 1. So we can replace this whole thing by just the number negative 1. Now, straight into the inverse tangent function, the arctan of negative 1 is negative pi over 4. But negative pi over 4 is not a value of arctan of 2 plus arctan of 3. So we have to fix it by adding a multiple of pi. But we'll just add a single multiple of pi. And that's going to tell us that this is 3 pi over 4. So that gives us the appropriate value here. So now we know arctan of 2 plus arctan of 3 is 3 pi over 4. But what that tells us is that our goal which is arctan of 1 plus arctan of 2 plus arctan of 3 is pi because it's well known that the arctan of 1 is pi over 4. So we get pi over 4 plus pi, 3 pi over 4 equals pi. Okay, great. So we've solved this one way. I'll go ahead and clean up the board and we'll look at our second solution. So the second solution we're gonna look at involves complex numbers. So I wanna recall a fact that if we have z in the complex plane, then that means we can write z as a plus bi, where a and bi are real numbers. So let's go ahead and write this. Let's say this is the real axis and this is the imaginary axis up here. And so if we have this is a along the real axis, and then this is b times i along the imaginary axis, that puts our point z right here. And so this is the so-called rectangular form for this complex number, but there's also a polar form for this complex number. And so if you think about making a uh, line segment from the origin to z. Notice that's going to have an obvious length, which we could call, call r. It's also called the modulus of z. And then it can have this obvious angle from the real axis, the positive real axis, I should say, which is theta. And that gives us the so-called polar representation of the complex number. So we have z equals r e to the i theta where r is the distance from the origin, and that can be measured like this. r is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. Where we have the tangent of theta equals um, b over a, because that completes this triangle here. Notice b over a and tangent is opposite over um, adjacent. And I also want to give a name for this. This is known as the argument of the complex number. So here we would say arg of z equals this angle theta, where we can write this as the arctan of b over a, but we might have to add like a multiple of pi if we're in the wrong part of um, the angle values, but we actually don't have to worry about that in this example. Okay, so now we want to find three complex numbers, one whose argument is arctan of one, arc, another with arctan of two as the argument, and another with argument of arctan of three. So um, let's consider these following numbers. So z1 equals one plus i. So notice 
the argument of z1 in this case is going to be the arctan of 1 over 1 because notice it's the imaginary part divided by the real part which is arctan of 1. Great. Which tells us that we can also write z1 as r1 where that's this distance from the origin times e to the i arctan of 1 because that's our argument and we don't have to worry about adding a multiple of pi in any of these cases because of the output of arctan puts us in the right spot notice it's always going to be between 0 and pi over 2 in this case okay so the next one that we want to look at is z2 which is 1 plus 2i so notice the argument of z2 is going to be arctan of 2 over 1 because it's the imaginary part divided by the real part, but that tells us that Z2 is equal to R2 e to the I arctan of 2. And then finally, we can set Z3 equal to 1 plus 3I, but that makes the argument of Z3 equal to arctan of imaginary part divided by real part, but that's going to be 3 and then that makes us, uh, that allows us to write Z3 as R3 e to the i arctan of 3. So I'm kind of running out of room, so I'm going to go ahead and um, bring this up and then we'll continue our calculation. So previously we considered the three following numbers, 1 plus i, 1 plus 2i, and 1 plus 3i. Notice they had argument arctan of 1, arctan of 2, and arctan of 3 kind of as needed. Now we're going to multiply these things two different ways. So we're going to multiply them rectangularly first. So 1 plus i times 1 plus 2i times 1 plus 3i. So we're just going to foil this all out. So maybe let's work from the left to the right. So notice if we multiply 1 times 1 is 1, and then minus 2 because we have i times i there. So that's going to be minus 1 for the real part. And for the imaginary part, we're going to get 3i. So we have minus 1 plus 3i. Great. And now here we have 1 plus 3i is left over. But now this looks like a difference of squares formula. Notice the imaginary parts are going to cancel, and then we're going to get uh, negative 1 minus 9, so that's going to be negative 10. But now notice that we can write that in polar form in the following way. So that's going to be equal to 10 times e to the i pi. So this like famous formula of Euler says that negative 1 is e to the i pi, and so that means we can write negative 10 as 10 e to the i pi. Okay, great. Now what we're going to do is multiply this together in the other way. So we're going to multiply r1 e to the i arctan of 1, r2 e to the i arctan of 2, and then r3 e to the i arctan of 3. Great. But now we can use exponent rules. Notice that's going to give us r1, r2, r3, and then e to the i arctan of 1 um, plus arctan of 2 plus arctan of three. But now what we can do is use the fact that this guy right here is the same thing as this guy right here. Which means since those are exactly the same complex number, they must have the same argument. But taking the argument of each one gives us exactly the formula that we, that we want. So in other words, extracting the angle part. So we have arctan of one plus arctan of two plus arctan of three equals pi. And you might be worried about this r1 times r2 times r3, but you can easily check that this is just going to be 10 in this case anyway, given the fact that you can calculate r1 and r2 and r3 with the Pythagorean theorem. I'll clean up the board and then we'll look at one more solution. So our final solution is going to use just straightforward geometry. So I'm going to start with a grid and a, our grid is going to be three boxes wide and two boxes high. So let's see if we can draw that. So there we go. 
So we want to pretend that those are all squares. And then the next thing that we want to do is put a triangle inside of this grid. And the triangle is going to go like this. So it's going to have one vertex right here. I'm going to call this point B. It's going to have one point down here, vertex down here. I'll call that point A. And then finally, it's going to have another one up here. I'll say this is vertex C. So now if we connect these, like that, like that, and like that. And now uh, let's look at some angles here. So let's maybe give the name of this um, angle theta one. Let's say this is theta two, and let's say this one right here is theta three. So the next thing I want to notice is I can calculate theta 1 and theta 3 very easily because they're part of a right triangle. They're each part of two different right triangles. So notice I can say that tangent of theta 1 is going to be opposite over adjacent. We'll notice opposite length is 3 units and our adjacent length is 1 unit. So I have tangent of theta 1 equals 3. So what that tells me is I, I can write theta 1 equals arctan of 3. Good. Now let's do the same thing with theta 3. So notice the opposite is 2 units long and the adjacent is 1 unit long. So that allows us to write a tangent of theta 3 equals 2. In other words, theta 3 equals arc tan of 2. Now, um, we also want to notice that triangle ABC is isosceles. So how can we notice that? Well, notice that this guy right here uh, goes over two units and up two units, and it also goes over two units and up two units, but kind of in reverse right there. So in other words, segment AB is the same thing as segment AC, okay? Another thing that we can notice is that triangle ABC is a right triangle. So now how can we check that? Well, we can check it actually from just calculating the lengths. So notice that the length of segment AB squared plus the length of segment AC squared is equal to the length of segment BC squared. So notice that the length of each of these squared is five. So notice we've got two squared plus one squared. So that's the, squ the square root of that makes this length square root of five. This length is also square root of five. And then this length is the square root of 10. So how can we see that? Well, it's one squared plus three squared, and then we take the square root of that. So notice that makes this a right triangle. Okay, so, but that tells us that this guy right here is our right angle, but that means that this is also theta two up here, given the fact that it's isosceles. So, but isosceles right triangles have 45 degree angles or pi over four angles. So in other words, tangent of theta 2 is equal to 1 because we know tangent of pi over 4 is equal to 1. Or arctan of 1 equals theta 2. But now let's move over here. Notice just from our picture, theta one plus theta two plus theta three is equal to pi because this is a straight line. But now rewriting this theta one, theta two, and theta three with arctan of one, arctan of two, and arctan of three finishes proving this identity a third way. Now that's the end of the video.